design your own life. With Dima Septia Lismana. Subscribe, tekan tombol bell, share dan like videonya ya guys. Terima kasih. They keep everything in this monastery, including the records of the ancient wisdom. What is in these texts that's so valuable? What is in these old texts that makes them so powerful? I want to share with you one of these texts. One of the texts that was edited from our Christian Bible is in this monastery. Now I'm going to share two of these images with you. We said earlier, to unleash the force of the divine matrix in our lives, first we have to understand how it works, and the science tells us how it works. Secondly, we must speak the language that the divine matrix recognizes and science cannot tell us that. That comes from our past, from our culture, from our history, from those who have learned and used this language for thousands of years. So this is what we're doing right now. We're learning what did the great masters say about this, this language. Because it's the same whether you're talking Buddhist or Hindu or Christian, pre-Christian traditions, they're all telling us that there is a field of energy and that we have the language to use that field. This is an actual page out of the Gospel of Thomas. So we know that this, this ancient Gospel actually existed. And you can see some of the letters. These are Greek letters. You can actually read some of, if you know Greek, you can see some of the Greek letters right here. In the Gospel of Thomas, two very important keys this was written uh, right around 300 uh, years after the time of Jesus. We've been in the Buddhist monasteries in Tibet, and they're telling us that feeling is the prayer, one. Two, that we must feel as if our prayers have already been answered. Okay, and now we're in an Egyptian monastery with the texts that used to be our tradition before they were edited. And we're going to look at the instructions that tell us how to do that. Gospel of Thomas, verse 106, translated from the Nag Hammadi Library. It says, when you make the two thought and emotion one. So the Gospel of Thomas is talking about thought and emotion. It's saying, when you make your thought and your emotion one, look at what happens. You will say to the mountain, mountain, move away, and the mountain will move away. It's saying that when you can marry your thought and your emotion into one single potent force, that is when you have the power to speak to the world. When you make the two one, the two, thought and emotion, when the two become one in our hearts, we create the feelings in our bodies. And you'll see how to do that in just a minute. Let's go back to the Gospel of Thomas, another verse. Now this is verse 48. It says almost the same thing. This was so important that it was recorded at least three different times in the same gospel. Look at what this says. If the two make peace with each other in this one house, you are the house, you are the temple. If the two make peace with each other in this house, if thought and emotion become one, if they make peace with each other in this house, look what happens they will say to the mountain, move away, and it will move away. He's telling us again, in a completely different verse, how powerful it is to marry thought and emotion. But they still haven't told us how. How do you do this? That's the next piece. In the early Christian Bible, your Bible today, 
there is a passage. How many have heard, ask and ye shall receive? Have you heard that before? Ask and ye shall receive. Have you heard that? I know people that ask and ask and ask and nothing happens. Because the asking is not done with the voice. The asking is not done, please, please, bring this to my world. That's not asking. To ask, we must speak to the field, to the divine matrix, in the language that the field recognizes. In a language that's meaningful, the field doesn't recognize our voice, it recognizes the power of our heart. Remember this morning, our heart, we have a feeling, creates electrical waves, magnetic waves. That's the language the field recognizes. So when you create the feeling in your heart as if your prayer is already answered, that creates the electrical and the magnetic waves that bring that answer to you. And you're going to see this in just a moment. Ask and you shall receive. While we still have this passage in our text, in the Bible that you have today, the King James Version, John 16, 23, 24, what you have is the condensed version. You have the edited version. The edited version looks like this. This is the edited version. Whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Okay, this is the edited version. This is so amazing to me because they took out the two sentences that tell us how to ask. In the fourth century, when the edits happened, they took those two sentences out. Would you like to see those two original sentences? All things that you ask straightly, directly, from inside my name, you will be given. It says, so far you've not done this. Because if we ask with our voice, we have not done this. Now here's the piece that was edited. Here is what was lost. Look at these two very powerful sentences. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer. Be enveloped by what you desire that your gladness be full. Look at what it's saying. It's not saying to speak a word. It's saying to be surrounded, to feel as if. If you are surrounded, you are feeling as if your answer has already happened. Be enveloped. If you want the perfect relationship in your life, if you want the healing in the body of your loved ones, feel the feeling of what it is like as if that has already happened. Be enveloped by what you desire because that is when your thought and your emotion become one. You think the thought of the healing in your loved ones and you feel the love of that thought. They become one and that is the language that this field recognizes. You're going to see an example of this, another example here in just a moment. Ask without hidden motive. What does that mean? Hidden motive. Ask without judgment. This is precisely what the Buddhists are telling us. Ask without the judgment of the right or the wrong or the good or the bad. Ask without the ego. Ask from the heart. Because to be, if it says be surrounded, that means to feel as if. To feel as if. Now if that sounds too religious, because it's from the Bible, we spoke this morning uh, about Neville. Uh, the, the philosopher Neville, early in the 20th century, his book, The Power of Awareness. Look at what he says, it's the same thing. Neville says, you must make your future dream a present fact. Now, by assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled, to come from the place that it's already happened. Have you seen martial artists when they demonstrate their focus, 
by breaking a concrete block. Here is the secret to breaking that block. When the martial artist is focused on that block, the very last thing that they are thinking is about their hand hitting the block. Because if they think about that, they know it will hurt. So they focus on what happens after their hand has passed through the block. As if it has already happened. They focus on a place below the block and feel the feeling as if their hand is already in that place. That is a metaphor, that is an equivalent for what we're doing with the power of emotion. Feeling as if the experience has already happened. 